We began our journey in the pioneer mountains of rugged Idaho. Set for a week-long adventure, we geared up with only what we could carry on our backs or in the small packs carried by Benji Hill's pack goats. The goats allowed us to be mobile to both drop and pack camp to follow elk from mountain to mountain, in which they traversed so easily. As I found out later, the goats proved to be a paramount asset when faced with packing 200 pounds of elk meat off of steep, rugged terrain. The hunting gear I chose for this trip was an Osage orange bow I made nearly a decade ago. When people want to know how long a good bow lasts, this video should prove to be quite a testament in longevity. Arrows are river cane, fletched with white turkey feathers, and tipped with exceptionally sharp stone points, napped from Montana porcelain. Master elk hunter and caller, Ryan Smalls, spotted this bull feeding along the opposing mountain face. We discussed plans of approach to close the distance before broadcasting our calls. And with evening setting in, I slipped up an avalanche slide to hide amongst some short pines. We remained quiet for over an hour in hopes that the pressured bull would succumb to his rutting curiosity, knowing that if we continued to call, we may very well turn him away. So we got good blood, like immediately, and luckily we got a little bit of snow, which is helping out, but I mean good blood immediately, and, uh, but we're not going to push it, I think we're just going to wait till morning, uh, just because we weren't 100% on the shot, and obviously elk's pretty big critter, so uh, it looks good, and the uh, and filming will look better in the morning yeah. anyway, so it's, it's cold, I mean what is it, like 38 maybe? Yeah, yeah, it's going to get real cold in there, it's... It we're in, they're going to be in the dark all yeah. morning. I'm I'm wearing my uh, my moccasins with just regular socks on under them. So yeah, and you said you <coughs> didn't hear anything with the shot, which was interesting. Right? No, I didn't we didn't hear, hear a whack or anything. It and was... and the fletching, I I lost the fletching, so I don't know if they disappeared or. The really good sign is the amount of blood. Instant. Because this yeah. is he's bleeding this much when he's bolting. Oh, yeah. So as soon as he gets up there and he starts to slow down. He definitely <coughs> it's going to be good. There, regardless of whether he yeah. fell or continued, he stopped. So, and that's what I was excited with, just sitting there thinking, Sweet. he stopped down there, so he's either going down, or he's just sitting there losing life, which is perfect either way. So, either way, we're here, yeah. you know, 637, and we'll pick this up. Mm -hmm. What kind of point was on that arrow? It was a, uh, a porcelainite point, Montana porcelainite. What is that color? Look like. uh, that one was a uh, more of a grayish color, oh, that was similar a to that there. Nasty. Wow. So that one's more of the white color. I got white, black, and then like a gray. Sweet. I think I might even have a red one in here I somewhere. I guess if I ever needed a reason to take a step deeper into the into the primitive zone, this is a pretty convincing operation you got cooking here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. He's giving me the old one eye. Where he's like moving his head like is that thing really like
like worth messing with or you know nice bull yeah well not i mean i'd say what like what you said um maybe 40 high 40s or 50 inch i wasn't really looking at the rack but just like you said the body height yeah i mean whatever They're his back so was as high big. as my head and he just came swaggering up this old logging trail was he all in velvet yeah yeah so and then he got to right there and i was just standing and i was like well now it's so close i can't even draw my bow if it's an emergency What you reading, Tim? I'm reading the Primitive Archery magazine. How to understand the arrowheads. And I, I hear a real good looking feller uh, wrote that article. I don't know. I saw him on his YouTube channel. He's kind of funny looking. Take a break. <sighs> Locating the downed bull across the next ridge, we first return to camp to trade our day packs for meat packs and to ready the goats for the work that lie ahead. Five by five with a little tiny nub. I told you I'd stop. Yeah. So. Well, I was watching the video. <laughs> All right, well, we sure enough did it. We're with uh, Benji Hill here at GoPro Idaho. And I mean, this is public land in the mountains. You can look out around here and see how wild this place is. And uh, this is getting it done you know the hard way for sure and uh, I mean that's what we pride ourselves in doing and, and we love it and it wasn't the you know the best shot that I that I really wanted but it you know shows that you know these stone points are still very very lethal and uh, you know we really them scary sharp serrations they tear it up pretty good you know and yeah. Uh, so yeah I, I really can't thank you enough I mean it was incredible pleasure you know and uh, and a special thanks to Ryan Smalls. Show him on up in there. I mean, this is a big team effort. Yeah, sure. we got the, the A team together here. Um, yeah, I mean, this was a team effort in yeah. in calling and and uh, shooting and recovery and certainly packing in and out. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's about to get real yeah, serious right. coming down here. <laughs> so, and thank Tim for filming it all. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> The shot entered behind the last rib, 
below the liver and came to a stop just after poking through the second rib on the opposite side. The shot was further back than I would have liked, and we decided not to share the entry wound, as it was not a public-friendly image. And despite the less than satisfactory shot, the stone point did its job exceptionally well in taking down this bull. Heavy though. Look out for a quick yeah. Pablo. Yeah, I know. Let's just put this in the Do you have that other smaller bag? Let's do those two for Pablo.